I mean, Seoul, what a great organization, um, great fan base themselves. You know, when we uh, first got the job here, I say we as the organization, everybody that was involved, you know, we knew this was going to be something special. Um, been doing this uh, for quite some time now, even though at my young age, but, um, you know, you know when to take a job, you know when not to take a job, and I, and I knew when to take a job. I, I knew that this was going to be special. Wanted to pay homage as much as we could to the Firebirds and the legacy that they left behind here in Albany. And then, uh, you know, just did my research, and I knew that this was going to be a special place. When I first got the job here, I flew up, and I went door to door for about three weeks, rented a car. Hit as many businesses as I could uh, and shook as many hands as I could, and everyone was so excited for this. And I knew it was just a matter of time. So, for us as a coaching staff, it was easy for us to sell players why you should come here. And I'm so happy that they bought Best it. Best coach in the league! Home field advantage. Three, six, six, six. Thing to describe it tonight. The advantage Woo! that you guys have, the crowd. Speak to them tonight and how much they have helped you. The, the fans, it, it, I cannot thank them enough. I mean, this is the place where, again, it works. You go to the grocery store, you go to the gas station, uh, you walk into any bar or restaurant around here and they know who you are, they care about you, there's flags on every household, uh, there's there's banners on every car, it's just an amazing experience. Um, even our colors, I mean, orange and blue is indicative of the New York State flag, I mean, the empire for a reason, right? I mean, this is this is well thought out. George Manius, the, the COO, uh, did an unbelievable job putting the staff together, front office staff of the year. So. For them to get the word out and for the players to do their community service and everything they had involved and for the, the fans to embrace us the way they have and to come out here and support us tonight, I'm so happy that they were a part of this. And the fans, 100%, uh, just as part of this as I am. Now for yourself personally, when Orlando floated 2017, you weren't even in the Arena Football League. Now you're back two years later. You won an Arena Bowl in the best part of the league. Just talk to me about that and the world you watched. Sure. You know, I'll tell you what, man. I, I think for me, uh, I think I'm a poster child for if you get knocked down, you can always get back up. I mean, that's what, that's what football coaches are, right? I mean, look at the adversity that we dealt with in the game. I mean, we turn the ball over, well, we get a turnover right back. And then we give up an onside kick, and then we get a turnover right back. It's, you don't quit, you know? And that's that's what I want to, you know, preach to everyone involved in this. Like, this is, this is, like, it's, it's, a true, it's a true belief in oneself. And so for me personally, just talking about myself, I, I'm never going to give up on myself. I really believe in the passion and the energy I have for this game. 2017, when the unfortunate uh, Orlando Predators folded, I mean, it was like a gut punch. Um, and then I had to take some time, reflect, and I'm glad now that the Arena Football League is into the right direction. It's under the right hands, the right guidance. Um, I really believe that this, you're going to see this often from places like Albany and, and the future expansion, and, and then eventually we'll have a viable, healthy league again, and then you won't have coaches that are worried about their job or life. Maurice Leggett, the guy that you coached before, came up with the longest interception return in Arena Bowl history officially. Speak to his game, what a jolt that an unbelievable player. And I, look, this business is all about relationships, right? And the relationships you have with players. And so the last time I coached him was, you know, 2012. And so for him uh, to be in the CFL for the last six years, you know, at one time he was the Kansas City Chiefs Special Teams Player of the Year. I mean, that's that's the impact that he has. And so I knew that I had to get him back. Uh, the CFL, uh, you know, was going to retire him. He wanted to continue to play. Definitely called him and I said, look, Mo, we need you. He wanted to be here. The guys embraced him. Just an unbelievable character person, but he's a great athlete and he's smart and he's heads up. And that was the difference, I think, this year of getting people that were just selfless and just would, would do anything for the team. And anything that was asked of him, he did. And tonight, it, it paid off in dividends. What's your plans for the next 24 hours? What's Coach Keith going to be doing? Honestly, we're going to enjoy ourselves. You know, I tell you what, you know, it's... Uh, I, I really firmly believe this was going to happen. I, I really did. And so I think sometimes when you don't believe something's going to happen, you're in shock almost. And, and no disrespect to Philadelphia, I just felt it. I, I really believe this. I envisioned this for 365 days. Um, but for me, it's we're going to have a great time tonight. We're going to embrace everyone that's involved in this. Fans, players, owners, front office, partners, sponsors. And then at the end of the day, I'm probably going to sleep for about a month. I'm going I'm to hibernate for a while. I lost about 12 pounds this week. And so it's a stressful time being a head coach, but it's all worth it. You know, I, I firmly believe in I just want to help others be successful. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a true servant leader. I just want to give and give and give. And I'm so happy everybody gets to enjoy this tonight. Uh, Coach, how much more does this win mean after last season's finish against uh, Washington? Well, it's something, look, uh, you learn from your experiences, right? And I, I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on the players to say, hey, you know what, we lost last year, so you got to win this year. It was for us as a coaching staff and organization to tweak what we needed to tweak. And I think the biggest thing is, again, no disrespect to any player that played for us last year. They did an awesome job. You know, we just finished short. What can we do differently? 
we had to upgrade in certain positions. We had to get more physical in certain positions. We had to get a, a little bit selfless, right? We had to make sure we got guys that understood their roles, and I think that's important in any teamwork and team culture environment. Just embrace your role, and we just preached a little bit more. I, I was a little bit more uh, comfortable in the surroundings that we had here, working with the front office. I knew how to kind of sell the uh, environment, and then they did the work. I mean, they, they listened to us. They trust us. You know, just for some of those plays that Philadelphia ran, we ran those plays every day for – you know, 30 minutes a day. I mean, we really, really worked really hard. And anybody that sees success, I mean, if you look at the correlation of who's successful, it's just hard work, and they put in the diligence and hard work to do it. Right. Coach, um, it looked like your team really stepped it off in the second half, especially your defense, too. Getting a bunch of uh, turnover on downs, forcing the offense for a soul to yeah. really push. What did you tell your team at halftime? At halftime, the biggest thing is, you know, I've been in this position before, and being guys, up, a, heads up guys. it's... Heads it's, up, guys. Got a cooler. It's... There's a big difference of playing to win and playing not to lose. And you play to win. When you play not to lose, you start looking at the clock, you're not as aggressive, you're trying to just get out of the game. We wanted to continue to apply the pressure, and there's a, just a different mentality from that. We wanted to get up, we wanted to continue to push, continue to push not to stop. That's been the model all year, want to know, but want to know every play. Want to know every game, but want to know every play. The great shape and the conditioning that we showed tonight, we weren't going to let up, and I'm just so proud that they didn't stop because now you can be a champion for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah. assistant coach. Oh. Coach. Can you just speak to how much of assistance they were to this year? No, look, Coach Moss and Coach Hewitt are head coaches. Uh, I, really, I mean, and, and a, a great job by Clint Dozell for being head coach of the year. A lot of people are saying, oh, I, I got robbed. And, and a big reason why people felt you when know, we had such a great staff because these guys are head coaches. We I mean, have three head coaches on the staff. And for me, I will always hire the best coaches out there. That, that's my belief. You know, the hardware at the end of the day is the trophy. But for me, to have mentors now, like Coach Ewart and, and Coach Moss, I, I can't thank them enough for not only their, their, their coaching ability, but their guidance and their friendship. When you're a young coach like myself, it's, it's, it's almost sometimes people feel insecure when you get older coaches because they've been there, they've done that. But I wanted to get the best coaches. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to embrace them being around me. And so, hey, man, great job. Oh, you Sorry. Oh, I love um, Class act right there. Um, and I think for me, the biggest thing was Coach Moss and Coach Ewer, they work every day and they saw my work ethic. And I think some older coaches, they don't know how maybe I work. And they saw how I worked within the first week and they said, look, this is something we can really do together. And 18 hour days, 18 hour days for a reason, for six straight months. Uh, we took trips in the recruiting process. We drove to San Antonio to scout the AAF. Uh, we, we embraced each other. And um, I can't thank them enough. We'll, we'll be friends for life. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Congrats on a great